Hare Krishna World Razor, Sabina and Roger here. Today, again, we go through the comment section of the Bhagavad Gita study video, chapter 10. Hind. I could finish the war in a second, but it is not my war. Krishna. Oh, wow. I think that's a direct quote, maybe from the Mahabharata. Because, oh, wow. of course. I just love like, it. Yeah, just like any problem in the world, technically oh. God could intervene. It's like, mm. you know, even even Jesus, you know, touched on that in the Bible, said that if my divine army would come, then... I love it. You know, like, so these celestial... My, what? My divine army? What? Yeah. So Jesus was aware. So I see Jesus being the son of... Krishna, right? Of course, Krishna has it. <laughs> quite, quite the statement. <laughs> quite the statement. But he was teaching that we are all the son of God, and to me, God is Krishna, right? So, okay. and of course, Krishna has a divine, celestial army, right? He's the source of absolutely everything, right? Okay. And then, so Jesus said, "Yeah, angels would come to his aid." Oh, oh, oh okay, angels' army. Okay, okay, okay. But of course, so this is a realm okay. where these celestial beings, they don't interfere because of what we touched on in the last comment video. We were talking about how, you know, oh, we so have free will, right? It's up to us to advance or de-evolve, you know, as technically as one creation, like mm -hmm. one humanity, we're one in reality. Are we going to rise up? There's, a, there's some teachings that say there's one human soul and we're all part of that soul. I love it. Right? Dry. Sorry to say, but English not able to translate the great Bhagavad Gita. And I humbly disagree because I have gained incredible mm. insights spiritually mm. from reading the Gita and listening to the Gita over the years and truly to the point where I do feel connected to Krishna. Like mm. the words are pouring out of his being into me, you know, through the English words. So... Sorry, I gotta disagree. It's it's not that simple. It's not that simple. This language, this language, um, not this, not that. Even simply by Roger, uh, you know, telling me things or just watching summaries of the Gita already blew me away. So what is that? Like a third person talking about it, you know, just a summary. Um, why, why do we gain insight through that? Uh, yeah. Could we just grasp, um, you know, ultimate reality through any way? Yeah, so the insights and the realizations are coming from one's intention. If you're intending yeah. to know the truth, yeah. then to think that, oh, so Sri Krishna, the God of all of existence, mm -hmm. who loves us as part of himself and created us, is going to say, oh, <laughs> if you guys want to come to meet my heavenly abode, and if you want to surrender onto my lotus feet, you need, first need to learn Sanskrit. No. Language has, has evolved and all languages mm -hmm. technically are also part of the divine manifestation. Mm -hmm. And yeah, these books were originally in Sanskrit and that's just the way that it is, but language has evolved. So then there needs to be a capacity for mm -hmm. other languages to have access to those teachings. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, that really limit, limits Krishna in his capacity mm -hmm. to share his wisdom with others. And Beautiful. I don't, nice, nice. I don't think Krishna is going to limit himself <laughs> right <laughs> he wants all of us to mm -hmm. you know seek the divine yeah, yeah. right so by whatever way whatever translation whatever language animesh i guess sabina will always have problems or conflicting views about war fighting because of her feminine nature uh -huh. i only re <laughs> only remedy i can see for her is to be at an authoritative position where her decision will change the lives or of many Maybe then she will understand what it is really mean to fight. It is a form of compassion as well, but problem is it can be easily hijacked by a materialistic person. Mm -hmm. So that's a great, great point. So you have to like just imagine you were the queen of a kingdom, right? Oh, God. Imagine you were the queen of a kingdom and there was a barbarian horde or Vikings that they just wanted to take over your country and kill oh. all your men and steal your women for their possessions what would you do what would you do as the queen would you would you tell your soldiers to train and protect the borders well to, yes to, to the queen yeah to protect the people the children oh, okay 
right? Yeah, I literally, I think I just have an insight. <laughs> Nice. Oh, okay. Because everybody has that duty. Yeah. If I would be queen, then I, I, yeah, okay. Then you would have to be, oh. you would have to protect your borders and you do that through your soldiers. You would have to tell your soldiers to kill the enemy, right? The barbarians are invading, oh, protect the borders, okay. you know, don't let them enter. If they cross the borders, that you have to engage in battle and you have to kill okay. them to defend our people. But because I'm not a queen now, I, I don't have to do that. And I don't even have to think about making these kind of decisions. So I can just like, yeah. it's not my duty in this lifetime. Mm -hmm. So, but it's someone else's duty. Yeah. And these people take care. And they need to. If they don't, then oh. there's, there's the world, be, the world okay. would be even more crazy right now. But anyways, so do you <laughs> see that example? Yeah, I get it. Yeah, 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 yeah. I get it. I get it. I, well, thank you, Animesh. Thank you. Insight for Sabina. <laughs> I love it. Gold, gold trophy to <laughs> Animesh. Animesh. Thank you. <laughs> Let's talk about, more about Brahmic Bliss with Safe Soil. I have never realized Brahmic Bliss, <laughs> but sure, one day last year I practiced for a month one HR hour straight meditation oh. on Kundalini Yoga with Vedic chants, and at the end, in my mind, a snake type thing started by to rotating. And it was not a headache, but it was something which was inside my mind, but it was that I couldn't handle, so I took a step back. Cool. Cool. I, had, <laughs> I thought the same cool. Yeah, <laughs> Thank you for sharing. Yes. <laughs> nice. May your practice evolve to realize that snake thing. <laughs> that snake thing, yeah. <laughs> Kundalini. Yeah, Brahmic bliss. Uh, wait, wait. Like, I think you will know when you... Mm -hmm. when, when it happened like it will be the bliss beyond be no, yeah. the bliss <laughs> more brahmic bliss with shikar <laughs> if the entire world sees this video the world will experience brahmic bliss <laughs> thank you um, our wonderful member may it be so may it be so brahmic bliss for everybody. For, for everybody. <laughs> yeah. Here's yes, your, please. Here's your Brahmic Bliss. <laughs> yeah. Here, you want some Brahmic Bliss? Yeah. Just hand, <sighs> yeah, hand, note, hand and note the Gita. It's right. not that easy, unfortunately. <laughs> Otherwise, yeah, we would be like, oof. But the Bhagavad Gita makes it possible. Yeah. Everybody can do it. Nitesh. I'm not sure about Brahmic Bliss, but after a long series of pranayam and kriya meditation a couple of times i felt a situation that is just full of bliss mm -hmm. it was like at that moment i had no desire of anything even the urge for breathing has mm -hmm. stopped that was the most beautiful and effortless experience that i have ever experienced i wish i can experience that again and for a longer time Nice. You will. You Absolutely. will. I sent you some prayers that you may experience it very, very soon. Mm -hmm. And many, many more experiences. And everybody out there, of course. Yeah, fantastic. Thanks for Beautiful. sharing. So good. Himanshu. So expected outcomes after realizing truth are energetic body, <laughs> joyful mind, <laughs> compassionate heart. Yeah. And experiencing this divine play of Krishna, Sabine and Roger, you both are very pure souls. Oh. <laughs> you both are the living examples that God can be experienced and loved. Mm. I can see it in your eyes. Love you both. Hare Krishna. We love you too. Hare Krishna. <laughs> yeah, thank you so much. And we do feel a jo joyful mind. My energetic body, I'm just sluggish from work. <laughs> he's, the, he's not very energetic lately. <laughs> but I'm joyful and my mind is compassionate. <laughs> Sabina has the energetic body. This, I have it all at state. the moment. <laughs> <laughs> so, fantastic. I'm having yeah. a great time. And we hope you too, everyone. Yep. Mm -hmm. He <laughs> hmm. Ah, Buddha nature. That's the term I was thinking about. Buddha in the Mahayana... Mahaparinirvana Sutra describes the Buddha nature, Buddha Datu, the Tathagata Garbha, mm -hmm. the true self, almost yeah. similarly Krishna does. Buddha calls mm -hmm. it eternal, eternal, undying, unchanging, yeah. full of bliss, just like Krishna does. Still, I don't understand why some of my Buddhist brethren deny the self. Mm. Anyway, about the Brahmic bliss, I don't think I've attained it, but I've got a tiny taste now and then whenever Satvaguna prevails over my consciousness. 
when I cry out to Krishna, although I'm crying, it still feels like the best feeling ever. I guess that could be a tiny droplet in the ocean of Brahmic bliss. Feeling blessed after seeing this video. Thank you very much. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Oh, what a beautiful comment. I love it so mm -hmm. much. Um, yeah, just touching on, you know, like, like we all, not all, like <clears throat> a lot of people experience, you know, some bliss already. And, you know, even though we didn't experience the Brahmic bliss, but, you know, a droplet in the ocean. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, um, us too. And it's, it's the most beautiful. Yeah. And we hope that everybody uh, will experience that. Yeah. Very descriptive, very beautiful comment. And then to just touch on, I don't understand why some Buddhist brethren denied the self. It's because we have different ideas of understanding mm. that self and their their denial of the self is the self right what so it's the path, <laughs> it's the path of negation right so they're saying that the self the atman the soul doesn't exist yeah ultimately yeah. right and that's the self that's that is the atman so it's the consciousness so it's the infinite field of consciousness but if you interpret the self as being, you know, the ego or part of our identity, and that's ultimately who we are, right? Ultimately, when you transcend that, you realize that that didn't exist ultimately. And then there's, you know, the paramatman, you know, which is the source of the atman. The atman is just a speck of the ultimate, right? So in the same way, if they deny the self, they're denying the self with the lowercase s, and that very denial is the self with the capital S because they're not denying the Buddha nature, right? No. Yeah. So if you understand the self, the self with a capital S, which is what we're talking about, you know, in the Hindu scriptures, the self with the capital S is the Buddha nature. So they're not denying the Buddha nature, yeah. they're denying the self, which is the lower self. Yeah. Right? Th that's why it's it's just, I think, just it's definitions words. and words. Words and definitions and, yeah. And that can get you in so much trouble. Yeah, and it's very much just that, that identity of being in a certain religion, right? So they want to deny anything that's coming from a different religion because so that they can keep hold it in mind that they're right and it's the only way so it's sad but it's just the way that it is is that yeah chinese it is right okay mm -hmm. i've never pronounced a chinese name but i try hmm. xiu zan maybe zan i don't know xiu zang hopefully <laughs> who was more right <laughs> xiu zang xiu zan <laughs> i am half chinese and half korean and my life changed from Filthy, full of sorrows, to happy, full of bliss because of Gita. Oh. I feel Krishna all day with oh. me. Krishna in every cell of my oh. body. Wow. That's amazing. We're so happy for you. Yes. Oh. Send us some of that, those vibes and energy. I want to feel that too. <laughs> oh, that's very beautiful. Very fortunate, very blessed. Yeah, and 59 thumbs up. Beautiful. Beautiful. Thank you so much for being with us. Pen and joy. But this world feels so real. I am unable to detach. Yeah. Yeah, that's that's what it's made for, right? If we weren't if it wasn't if it didn't feel so real, yeah. you know, then there wouldn't it wouldn't exist because there wouldn't be a, mm -hmm. a reason for us. We wouldn't get attached. And then and then the creation wouldn't have evolved to the point that it is. It's the very fabric of maya and illusion and ignorance that allows for this creation to take place so in a way mm -hmm. it's actually very very beautiful right because we don't all need to become enlightened and it is our destiny but in a certain way we can rise to a level of like unconditional love you know the level of a saint and still mm -hmm. maintain our egos but it would be a more purified egos and to me that would that symbolizes you know the epitome of a materialistic being you know, being in the world, you know, but not of it, yeah. right? So that's very much like a bodhisattva who, mm -hmm. you know, who denies enlightenment, even though they, they know enough and they practiced enough that they could attain enlightenment. Mm -hmm. But they say, hmm, no, I'm going to withhold on enlightenment for now and I'm going to keep reincarnating into samsara to help uplift the world, mm -hmm. right? So, so it's not about, you know, detaching totally. It's about being non-attached. So you could be in the world, but not of it, right? So very much engaged in the world, understanding it's a divine play, 
you mm-hmm. know, and then doing nice. yeah, yeah, and then yeah. doing something meet- meaningful yeah. and creative. And you can even pray for some, huh, what can I do? Something creative that will uh-huh. help the world. So honestly, that's what happened to me and us with this channel. I really, really prayed. I'm like, well, what can we do? Like, what, what is there to do? And, what, and then it's like... It happened to Roger and then he dragged me along. <laughs> Believe me, this was not my first choice to do in this lifetime, but I really do enjoy it now. <laughs> yeah, so like, yeah, we kind of had a bit of a conflict and I said... Yeah, it's like, no way. I said, well, I'm doing YouTube. You could either join me <laughs> yeah. or not. And like, thankfully, okay. <laughs> thankfully, she joined me. Oh, yeah. Because yeah, I yeah. couldn't, I honestly couldn't do it without her. So I think that... <laughs> Jeez. Anyways, I wanted to say that I heard a quote just last week um, saying only the bravest of souls incarnate on Earth because mm. the the illusion is so flawless. Oh wow, yeah. It I is. thought, whoa, mm. I love that. Just adding to that. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah. So, anyways, best of luck. Yeah. Pem joy. Sid, we just had to laugh. We only read it now uh, and hearted it now. I wish I could give more than one like. Yeah. <laughs> Thank we you. wish you could too. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's true. We love likes. <laughs> but yeah. they're important, otherwise we became. We wouldn't grow, grow without no. love likes. Yeah. Munish. Gita changed my life. I want to mm-hmm. share what I understand from verse Truth will never perish and untruth will never exist. This verse was explained by His Holiness Swami Sarvapriyananda as follows. Take ornaments, for example, a necklace and a ring. The way we use them both are for different purposes. Apart from their shape, name, there is no such thing called a necklace or a ring because the gold which is present in them, it is in the shape of a necklace, then it is called a necklace. The thing which is unchanged in the changing things is called satya, truth. Here gold is truth, in the same way Krishna is truth, and the creation is untruth. The way necklace cannot exist without gold, creation cannot exist without Krishna. So the tr- <laughs> untruth, creation has no existence, and Krishna has no inexistence, because ultimately Krishna is creation and everything. Yeah, that's, oh, kind of, that's deep. <laughs> that's very deep, and that's very cool. Yeah, so thank you so much for this comment. That was amazing. And we love Sarva Priyananda's video. We watched it quite a while back, and his talk, he gave that I, example. I actually thought, it's like, how yeah. haven't I heard this before? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so it's, yeah. so the gold is like the essence mm. of the thing, but then we shape it, and then it becomes that. But it doesn't exist, mm-hmm. ultimately. Mm-hmm. Ultimately is what is it made of. And I see that as, so your example is Krishna, which I 100% agree. But to understand it better, I like to use consciousness, right? So Krishna is manifesting as the infinite field of consciousness. And from that, everything is manifesting within. Mm. And it's not separate. It is the very essence of consciousness itself that is allowing everything to manifest. And that's the ultimate. So when we're in material existence, like look at our cells. It's like everything is energy and science has proven that it's like atoms and mm. electrons and quarks. We're all manifesting from something and that something is consciousness and understanding deeper in Krishna so truth Daisy Roger is more of Jnana and Raja Yoga mm. Sabina is more of Bhakti mm. Roger knows how to put things that don't make sense right away on the back burner <laughs> and Sabina can shortcut to the biggest claims with her emotions oh <laughs> this comment <laughs> yeah so true so that's the limitation of the intellect and i understand the limitations of my path but i've embraced it because of my intention i set an intention many many years ago like 20 years ago now that if there was a, a, an ultimate truth knowable by human beings then i intended to know it so that set me on the intellectual path so mm. so i do understand things very intellectually and that of course has led me to bhakti which i do you know offer service and devotion to the supreme lord but my journey is definitely more intellectual where because mm-hmm. i see sabina all of a sudden she's making big progress and advancements through through devotion and through practice mm-hmm. and getting into these joyful bliss states <laughs> and in which is great because she's more like bouncing she'll bounce up to these high states and then she'll come down and then she'll bounce up again and i'm always just <laughs> yeah. kind of even yeah. So I'm even, so I never really go down into the low states anymore. 
that much, but I'm also not going into the high states that、mm. she's experiencing these、mm. sorts of bliss because I'm always kind of you know joyful and unperturbed. <laughs> so I have that yeah, equanimity. Patient, yeah. So I kind of have the equanimity、yeah. where、yeah. she's getting into some bliss.、So. <laughs> Balancing, I like that. She's <laughs> bouncing up and down, and I'm just always like. <laughs> What's going on? How is it going to be when I get home today? Where's Sabina going to be? <laughs> yeah, but it's not like bouncing in the past where I have my ups and downs. You know, it's, it's much like, better. Yeah. This, yeah, but but these ups are not excitement. Like、mm. the ups I have now has nothing to do with external、mm-hmm. circumstances. It's not like I watch a movie and I'm super like freaking excited. That happens too. But my highs are literally like. Beautiful, blissful experiences, beautiful like deep、yeah. awareness. Is like, whoa, what is happening?、Mm. Um, yeah, <laughs> <Not> <laughs> <I like it. laughs> Kishan. Srimad Bhagavad Gita is the book of books, knowledge of all knowledges. It's the book of infinite and divine. Many scholars say it is very difficult to understand the core meaning of Bhagavad Gita. And I too somehow experience that. Maybe I understand less than point zero zero one percent. Hare Krishna. Well, if you're saying Hare Krishna with devotion, then I can already guarantee that you understand way more than point zero zero one percent. Oh, that's nice. No, it's true. It's、mm. because you know the Bhagavad Gita is teaching the truth, you know, from God Himself on Earth. And if you、mm. accept that, then it means that you're already very fortunate and blessed. Because,、mm. of course, some of the scholars, you know, and you know, psychology or philosophical schools, possibly even outside of Buddhism, you know, they they'll read the Gita and they won't get any sort of insights that Krishna is actually、mm. God, right? They'll deny that, and then they'll say that it's just a descriptive, you know, poem and it's very、mm. creative, but. But the message in the core will go right over their heads. But if you understand enough to realize that, okay, well, Krishna is speaking as God,、mm. and then you surrender onto that, then there's nothing really more that needs to be done than that, other than practicing. Oh,、mm. so having the insights and then practicing the teachings, and then by practicing what is taught, that's the understanding is to just、mm. practice what is being taught. Yeah. So, anyways, I think you are on the way. Yes, yes, yes. And Keith, for so many reasons, I love both of you. <laughs> you are doing a fantastic job. You are truly seeking the divine, and that's the thing I am the happiest for. You guys are putting great effort in what you've been doing. For better understanding of the Bhagavad Gita, you should have some basic basic knowledge of Mahabharat.、Mm-hmm. I wish you both good health and enlightenment. May Lord Krishna shower His divine blessings upon you, and you get enlightenment from the Gita. Thank you for all these proud videos. Yes, and I agree. So we need to have some knowledge of the Mahabharat, and I have read it. You know, a more condensed version, but it was very mind blowing, right? So I truly、uh, enjoyed it, right, and was engaged with it. And I remember the stories, and I'm getting more insights through our comment section now,、mm-hmm. and I'm able to pass that on to Sabina to kind of set the <laughs> stage for what is happening.、Mm-hmm. But yeah, I do agree. It's part of the Mahabharat. Absolutely, and we love you too. Yeah, we love you too. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much. B B once again,、uh, very very long comment. So I'm not going to go through all of it, but yeah, of course I want to touch on it. We must first understand what does the term Shatria actually mean. Does it mean just picking up weapons and going to war with other kingdoms, countries, or nations, or just? Warring for the sake of it, like the Vikings. No, a satria, a warrior, must be understood in dharmic terms as a spiritually evolved being who survives to protect dharma, which would stand for love, righteousness, peace, friendship, knowledge, spirituality, morality, etc., and all things good. Without dharma, a righteous duty, there would be no society or creation, but the opposite. Disaster and extreme negativity that we call evil. Hence, the chaturya does not refer to one who just uses weapons or joins battle, but this one whom is spiritually awoken to muster the positive spiritual energy from within and materialize it as daria, courage and confidence to serve society. In essence, the chaturya is a defender of dharmic society, of common people, of sages, of sadhus, etc. He she stands like a rock against tyranny and evil, and keeps alive only to serve the society、wow. in any 
way. So I love it. It that was beautiful. Thank you. Yeah. So so the importance of、uh, Satria, right? So because like what we mentioned in the first when we we're talking about a celestial, you know, conches and blowing these celestial horns, there was divine weapons and there was God present. There was Hanuman was, you know, there as the flag. <laughs> Oh, I forgot about that again. Yeah. Oh, wow. So it was a very, <laughs> you know, yeah. And then I mentioned in that past video, it's just spiritually involved、cool. beings. These these warriors, like just their powers and everything. And、mm. we're talking about like even cities, for、mm. example, like like yeah, the、oh, narr、yeah. the narrator had divine vision. You、oh. know, it was a time where、of、there was、course. just more more mystical. Capabilities,、yeah. you know, there was like cities yeah, were probably yeah, yeah. a common thing, and enlightened beings, and all sorts of things going on. So I like this: a spiritually advanced、yeah. warrior.、Huh. Yeah, so, and、beautiful. the key word is spiritual, right? So、mm. understanding, and of course, you know, our June being devoted, you know, to God. It's yeah, it's incredibly love it. Incredible. Thanks, B. Cyan. I'm sure even in future, youngsters will come here in this channel and watch this again and again. This work and effort will be loved, and it will be evergreen in YouTube. <laughs> Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Amazing. So let's pray for that because I do think the younger generation needs to, you know, discover these teachings, and I pray for it、yeah. and I hope for it. It's my wish and. Uh, mm -hmm. So thank you so much for this prayer as well. Yeah. And evergreen in YouTube means that it's it's found forever. It's evergreen. Oh,、yeah. it's ever. Oh. Yeah.、Aww. So that's amazing. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. This was a blast. And if you want us to keep doing these, then keep commenting on our upcoming chapter videos because, yeah, there's a lot of chapters remaining, and、More、the Gita is just going to get more and more profound. And Sabina's first time, and many of you as well. So let's keep rocking it, and let's keep hitting that like button. Oh yes, we love you. Thank you so much, guys. Peace. Peace.